If you are preparing for SQL interview or you want to improve your SQL skills, then this is the video for you to watch. We are solving the hardest problem on HackerRank in SQL. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below for any questions and enjoy the video. So let's dive right in. Today we are going to do 15 days of learning SQL. Julia conducted a 15 days of learning SQL contest. The start date of the contest was March 1, 2016 and the end date was March 15, 2016. Write a query to print total number of unique hackers who made at least one submission each day starting on the first day of the contest and find the hacker ID and name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. If more than one such hacker has a maximum number of submissions, print the lowest hacker ID. The query should print this information for each day of the contest sorted by the date. And for that we have two input tables. The first one is hackers table which with just two columns, hacker ID and name. And the second one is the submissions table with four columns, submission date, submission ID, hacker ID and score. For that we also have a sample output. We can see here the sample input from the tables, hacker ID name and the four columns from the submissions tables. And this is how it should look like in the end. So this is the sample output. So we have each day, 1st of March, 2nd March, 3rd of March and so on. Then we have the count of the hacker who made at least one submission each day. And this is the most crucial column that we have to get right here. This is also the hardest one to get right. So the second column, what does it actually mean that made an, a submission each day? So in the 1st of March, four people made a submission in this sample output. In the 2nd of March, two people made a submission on the 2nd of March that also did a submission on the 1st of March. So they have to do it each day. If you don't make a submission one day, then you're out. You have to make it continuously. If you made it on the 1st of March, you have to do it 2nd, 3rd, 4th, otherwise you're not counted anymore. That's why this number can never go down can never go up again so we have a four in the in the first of march then we have two in the second and then it just stays the same so the the hacker submitted again the next day or it goes down here it goes to one and then in the last one it is one it will never go up again this is very important to remember so let's write as always in a short note what we actually have to do so so as we see here in the sample output we have to get four columns output goal so first one is submission date okay that's should be pretty easy so we just get the submission date for every day we have 15 days as it says 15 days of learning sql and we get just get for each day we get the submission dates out okay fair enough then number of hackers who made submission each day that's the second column that we have to get right so each day and they have to make the submission and unique hackers so unique hackers, what does it mean? We need a distinct number of distinct hackers. We can already write that here. Number of distinct hackers who made a submission each day. What's the third column that we have to get? The third column is a hacker ID. So we get it from here, hacker ID from the submissions table, which is also the same uh, column as in the hackers table. And what should be the hacker ID? Hacker ID of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. So, hacker ID of hacker who made max number of submissions. And the fourth one, 
The fourth one is just the name of that hacker. So the first one is just the name. It's the same uh, query. It's just the name. Hacker name of three. So we have conditions, order condition for three and four. So the, for the maximum hacker, we have order condition. What's the order condition for them? Hacker ID and name of the hacker who made maximum number of submissions each day. If more than one such hacker has the maximum number of submissions, print the lowest hacker ID. Okay, so first uh, maximum submission, second lowest hacker ID. Okay, so let's start slow and let's go to MS SQL and just get out, for example, the submissions table from submissions select star from submissions so let's get all these submissions table okay so here we have the submission date we have what is the second submission ID hacker ID and score okay so submission date let's write it down submission date what do we need Submission ID, hacker ID, and score. Submission ID, hacker ID, and score. Okay, so the first column that we want is the submission date. So let's get this submission date. Select submission date from submissions run this okay so now we get very often the same submission date because we get it for every row that we have and we have a row for every submission that we got but we don't want a row for every submission we just want the submission date to be one time in here so what do we do we make group by submission date so then we can just get it one time Okay, so now we have it one time and this doesn't look very ordered. So we also make an order by submission date. So this is how we get the first column, right? So we get the first column and then we do the same for the second, the third and the fourth. And we try to combine it on the way. So now we have the order right from the 1st of March to the 15th of March. Okay, so what is the next one that we want to get? We want to get the number of distinct hackers who made submission each day. So let's take the first approach to solution for first of March. So to make it a bit easier, let's do it first just for the first of March. So for the first of March, we would do count the distinct hacker hackers. Okay, so we make a count from distinct hacker ID. Group by submission date is correct. Order by submission date is also correct. We need a comma. So, and then we want to have it for the 1st of March first. So we make where submission date like 2016, three, one. Okay, great. So we already have the two, the first two columns for the first day. So we have the 1st of March 2016 and we have 112 distinct hackers who made at least one submission in that day. So now the third column. The hacker ID of hacker who made maximum number of submissions. And the hacker name is the, the first column. So they are basically pretty similar. We get the logic right and then we get the hacker ID and the hacker name out of it. 
So how can we get that now? So let's put this code for to the side for one moment. First two columns. We got this code. And now let, let's think about it a bit separately. Hacker ID of hacker who made the maximum number of submissions. So one way to think about that would be with a row number. Select, so in a row number, you can give uh, every row a number and you can have two arguments, partition, you can partition the row and you can order the row. So let me show you what it means. Row number MSSQL and why we can use it in this instance. So here we have the row number. And let's take this one, this example out of here. So we want to count the rows because why do we want to count the rows? We want to get the maximum. Why do we have to count the rows? Well, in the row number, we can give the maximum Hacker, the hacker who made the maximum number of submissions, we can give, we can put it and put him on the top. So he gets the number one and then everybody else gets number two, three, four, five, and so on. So if we do that, then in another query, in the next query, we can just ask for the number one row and then we get the maximum hacker, the hacker with the maximum submissions. So row number over, so partition, by what do we want to partition? Partition means we start again, counting from one. So row number gives every row a number. That's why it's called function row number. And partitioning, by what do, when do we want to start counting again? We want to start counting again when we come to a new submission date. Then we want to get a new count because we want to get again the maximum hacker. In the 1st of March, we want to get the maximum hacker as the row number one. And in the 2nd of March, we want to get him again as the row number one. So we start counting again. So we want to make a partition by the submission date. We want to partition by that and order by, by what do we want to order? So we want to get on top the one with the maximum number of submissions. So we want to count the submission, what is this called, submission ID. We want to count the submission ID. Wait, no, not the submission ID. The submission ID is always just one. We want to count the uh, Hacker ID. How many times is the hacker ID going to appear on that on that particular day? For example, here Angela is in the sample output. Angela has the hacker ID 2703. 2703 is here one time and 2703 is here two times and here also again three times. So that's why she's on top. She has the most submissions. So we count the hacker ID. To get him on top, we have to actually make descending to get the maximum on top. And then we need a second order condition. Then we want the lowest hacker ID on top. If they are both the same from the count of hacker ID, then we want the lowest hacker ID. So we make hacker ID ascending so that the lowest is on top. We we don't have to write ascending and automatically doing ascending, but we are writing it here. Okay, great. So this is how we get the row number right as row number. So what else do we want? We want the hacker ID out. We want the submission date. We want the hacker name. What's it called actually? Just name in the core row column is just name. 
And now from where do we want to get it? From submissions table. And we want to join because the name is not in the submissions table. We want to join with uh, hackers table. Join hackers on, on what can we join? On the hacker ID equals s dot hacker id we also have to group because we have an aggregate we have an aggregate function which is count so we have to group everything that is not in the count so we have to group the submission date the hacker id the name and hacker ID, actually we have to say which hacker ID because we have two hacker IDs in the submissions and in the hackers table. S dot hacker ID, we count also the S dot hacker ID. Submission date, it's fine. Hacker ID, S dot hacker ID descending. Okay. So I think that it, that's it. Let's run this code and try it out. Okay, let's make this big for a moment. So what do we have here? We have Denise on top. In the 1st of March. And then goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on. And then here it starts with the next. After 112 hackers, it starts with the next. And we get Ruby on top. So the question is, is that on top here, the maximum hacker, the one that is with an count number one here, 81314, is that the one with the maximum submissions? So let's check that out because we want to test it, right? We want to know. So what do we do? Let's take this one to the side, get third and four columns and let's make select so it let's remember which one was number one denise here denise number one was on top number one for first of march so let's select star from Submission date where submission not submission date from submissions where submission date like twenty sixteen three one and let's order this by the hacker ID. We can also order it by the count of hacker ID. And we can select hacker ID, count of hacker ID. Group by hacker ID to see if she's on top. Okay, then here we can actually see that 813134 is the only one with uh, three submissions. So this is indeed the one with the most submissions for that day. So let's go back to the query that we had for the third and fourth column. Let's put this one again. And now you can see also why I did that here in the separately, because I'm gonna take this, this query now for the third and fourth column. So what actually we want, we want a hacker ID out. We need the row number because we have to filter after the first one from the row number. We need the hacker ID because we have to give it out. We need the submission date because we are going to join it over the submission date and we need the name because also this is also part of the output. So we make with max hacker and we make it as a 
its own table. And now we are going to take the first one after this, the first two columns from submission date, 1st of March. And now we can just join them from submissions, join max hacker on, we join it on the submission date because everyone because then we get uh, for every submission date we get just one row why is that because we also make the only also just get the first row number so submissions s on max hacker mh mh dot submission date equals s dot submission date and this is important row number equals to one so we get the max hacker out so we need the submission date what else do we need submission date number of distinct hackers yes then we need the hacker id we need that from the maximum hackers table hacker id submission date is from the submissions table this is also from the submissions table, the hacker ID. And we need a name also from the maximum hackers table, mh.name. So now we get the four columns out. Okay, so submission date is actually a lot of times here in the query and we still have to say which submission state, s.submission state s dot submission date where s dot submission date like 2016 3 1 max hacker dot hacker id is invalid okay so it's not grouped enough so we have the submission count from this uh, hacker id so we have to group everything else we only group the submission date we also have to group the hacker id mh.hackerid and also the mh.name okay great so now we have for the first of march we have 112 distinct hackers and we have the maximum submission from hacker id 81314 from denise so let's take out this submission date like 2016-31 and let's run this one now so and now we have for each day so it still says wrong answer so the question is why it's saying wrong answer now because we have uh, the submission date we have count distinct we made a count distinct from the hacker id we gave the one with the maximum hacker id out and also with the, the name from the maximum hacker so the question is why we still have wrong answer well we talked in the beginning about that that the second column is the most tricky one here and we can see that we have 112 distinct in the first one and the second one 144 which is more than in the first one which is impossible because the, the hackers have to submit each day in order to be counted and if they didn't submit here on the first day in the 112 they cannot be counted in the second day now that doesn't be a count for the maximum hacker the maximum hacker is made every day new again and it doesn't matter if the maximum hacker wasn't at all in the 1st of March. If Ruby was not there in the 1st of March, uh, it can still make the most submissions in the 2nd of March. But for the second column, it really has to be, the hacker has to be there every day. So that's why this is still wrong. And actually all the other columns are right. So the submission dates, we got them right. We have exactly 15 submission dates with uh, 15 days uh, dates. Uh, variables here that's fine and we have the maximum hacker id and the maximum name and to get this row right we have to figure out how we can how we can remember which one was in the first which one was in the second which one was in the third we have to kind of remember that throughout the 15 days and then we have to also give it out in the second column and it can only go lower or equal from every number so this has to it can never go up here 
And to figure that out, we I made this. I will make a second part of this video. And until that part, please think about it. Like, what would be your solution? How would you try to find the solution? Maybe you don't write that query, but try to get an idea or a sense of it. Like, what you can do in order to solve this and to get it the right answer. Because this is the hardest problem on HackerRank SQL. It is not solved yet, but we will solve it in the next part. So I see you there and thanks for watching.